Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you back. Thank you back. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. If this is your first time here, my name is Chanel and I am a tarot reader. Um, I create self-help workbooks to help support you through connecting with um, your feminine energy through your womb, right? Really connecting with that body wisdom within um and utilizing tarot and astrology with that. And I also am a root worker, conjure hoodoo worker. <laughs> okay. So if there are, those are some things that you're interested in, some personal workings, um, by whatever means, you can check that out at the link below in the description box. Um, if you are returning, Thank you for coming back. Be sure that you like and subscribe so that you can receive all the notifications, all the everything, okay? And yes, also supporting me in helping my channel grow. Okay, so my son may be coming in and out at this time because he's just, you know, in his independent time and everybody else is busy so <laughs> not that they can't tend to him but you know the kids be wanting mommy first before anyone anything okay so but let's go ahead and get started so today we are going to get into this autumn equinox energy seeing what it is that we have going on so what i'm going to do i'm going to pull cards collectively and then i am going to pull a few cards by the elements so air fire um wood water and earth right and within each element i'll pull an individual card for each sign so this video might be a little long so get what you need get your coffee get your tea get your, your beverages get comfortable all right and i'll be sure to time step everything below as well so if you want to just jump ahead but you know i feel like it's good to see what it is that you have predominantly within your chart, right? So maybe you have a lot of earth energy, maybe you have a lot of fire energy, a lot of um, water energy. Listen to your sun, moon, and rising signs, okay? Um, or maybe you also want to listen to the season that we're in whenever you watch this. Right now, when I'm recording this, we are watching, um, we are watching, we are in Libra season, okay? So yes, oh, and also right now, well not right now, from here on out, all the readings on the site are $55. This is just the recording readings and the live readings are the prices that they are. All right, so if you want a live reading, which all readings are available to be live, um, they are the price that is listed. Okay, and also for Hoodoo Heritage Month, we have a 25% discount on all conjure work, all root work. So reach out to me if you are needing some support in that at this time. Okay, so yes, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to break the season down into two, two halves, right? So the first half we have is transition, and this is sleeper in half of Scorpio season. Okay, so things are changing, the leaves are falling, we're harvesting in the beginning of the harvest, right? And then we have the second half, which is working sow. And so everything, we have this gold here on the floor. Um, so it's like we're walking now in the space of everything it is that we're harvesting is very grounded within a Scorpio. The second half of Scorpio and Sagittarius, the all of Sagittarius season. Okay, so... So we are going to go ahead and get started. But first, I'm going to begin by rolling these dice. But let me a little bit on first spirit ancestors of those who are watching this video. Angels, spirit guides that support us, that walk with us, that provide protection, provision, clarity. Removal of blockages, insight, guidance, the advice it is that we need that put us the signs in our face that we need when we need them. I'm calling you and asking you to come through and intercede on the behalf of the collective, of all of the elements, all of the zodiac signs. What messages do we need at this time? 
what advice, what insight, what guidance is needed at this time? I ask that you allow me to be a channel to provide the messages to this that is coming through. A bridge for the worst crossover. Um, so I was getting a lot of alchemizing energy when it comes to this season. Um, things transforming, but alchemy in the sense of what has already been invested into. Not that there won't be things that uh, won't start new, right? But um, this can be internal. It could be something that has been something physical. It could be of a mind thing, you know, um, but there may be some tower energy happening as well by way of this. But let's see what's going on. Spirit for the collective of this autumn fall season. Those in the northern hemisphere that operate under this season. And if you are in um, the southern hemisphere and are experiencing the opposite, perhaps this aligns with you as well, right? So if we are in autumn, you all are beginning spring. So let's see. Wishes. My son is in here. All right. So there may be a lot of company, which with this energy, it seems to be that we have that rolled out Neptune in Virgo in the third house. So this is a lot of very, oh, very creative uh, conversation community. Okay, so with Neptune in Virgo in the third house, this is a lot about very structured, structured yet whimsical type of doing things, way of movement. Um, there may be some unexpected changes when it comes to like work, business um, matters. This can even be like your routines and your rituals. Um, Virgo is very much so like that ancestral root work uh, type of energy, right? So um, in third house is very magician energy. Neptune is that as well, you know, just things happening out of the blue. Okay, so this can be things manifesting tangibly, success um, that has been invested into. Like, so on the outside, it may seem very magical to an outsider. Like, how did you do this kind of thing? But there's a lot of work that's been put into it. And the work, the physical is manifesting by way of the internal growth that has been taking place, right? A lot of the healing that's been taking place, a lot of uh, changing in the mind. This is very strong alchemy energy. This is like, um, so Pisces and Virgo are opposite of one another, okay? So with these two energies coming together, it's kind of like, they've met up in expressing that aspect of wholeness that their opposition uh, attempts to achieve, right? Through each transit, through those of us who have that type of uh, particular aspect within our charts, you know? So this is a very magical time during this autumn energy and it's uh, a lot in reference to us, right? There may be some changes in uh, the dynamic within our families, even um, maybe with even our siblings, like we may, some of us may have some siblings come live with us um, or some immediate family member come live with us. This might be something that maybe like out the blue, all of a sudden, um, Right. This can also speak about. OK, this energy can also manifest as like chaotically. Right. So. The where, the what, the how, the how is being in with Neptune. Right. So this is like um, very etherically 
or more so like soul based type of energy, right? Uh, hidden subconscious energy. There may be a lot of work taking place on the subconscious realm when it comes to how it is that we communicate, what it is that we think we know and what it is that we, that is on our minds. So there may be a lot of restructuring even of our beliefs, like some very deep held karmic beliefs that have traveled with us through lifetimes, you know, and this is, it's being rooted up out of us, right? So that we can move forward in a more free spirited type of fashion, all right? This is also very creative energy. Right. So we may be creating um, a new home. Maybe our daily lives are changing in some way that's going to be very successful. Right. That's going to go with the flow of things and not be so necessarily um, not so drabby. Right. Uh, recently, just a few minutes ago, Bashar was like, I'm so bored. And I was just like, okay, well, you know, you can go to school if you want to and be around some kids or you can do other stuff throughout the day. He's like, no, he wants me to be his teacher. He wants home to be his school, right? How he has been. Um, so with that, there are a lot of things that we have, we will be implementing differently for him to have more fun, right? But at the same time, it has to be expected that some things have to be the, the way they are so that there can be structure, so that there can be a foundation to promote progress. All right, because consistent progress happens when the stability, when the foundation is stable. Okay, so with this, with this uh, Neptune in in Virgo energy, sometimes it can seem as if during this season that things are just falling out of our hand, that we think we have a grasp on something and it just leaves. All right, but this also may make it very easy for us to be able to. Uh, attain the growth it is that we want, right? Divinely inspired movement, for real, like supernatural wisdom being had, being taking place here, very alchemical, right? Water in, in earth here, uh, making things tangible by way of air, right? The air is carrying it forward, okay? So some of us may also be uh, getting some new vehicles. Perhaps some of us may be gaining some ex unexpected money even uh, coming through. This can be from like some old work that was invested into. And this can even be just one of those things like, hey, wow, I won this type of energy, you know, but it's all really coming through from us choosing to be ourselves. This is a lot about authenticity and how it is that we express ourselves, how it is that we go about doing things, right? And just being very honest, very clear. There could be, now, there could be some deception, right? There's always space for that, like hidden enemies, because Neptune is of hidden enemies, Virgo is of open enemies, right? So we may find out, right? It may be revealed to us that we have some enemies in reference to our movement, right? To the way we communicate to our business, if we have a business, maybe even to people we work with, maybe people in school that we go to school with, that we learn it with, right? Um, uh, so, like, I don't know, bullies may come out of nowhere kind of thing, um, like unexpected hate coming out of nowhere even, mm. Oh, I hate talking about that kind of energy, but it's just, it's always there, right? It, you, you can't have one without the other. So it's like, well, whatever, it just is what it is kind of thing. Um, and this can come about from you choosing to authentically be yourself, to show up and be yourself, to be the bigness that you are. Neptune and Virgo is some really big energy because it is taking that, that um, cosmic energy and grounding, right? And in the third house, it's moving, it's going quickly. All right, granted, but it's step-by-step step and it's methodical. So it's like, 
these downloads, these ideas, and these creative inspirations are coming and we're like, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is the plan. This is how we're going to do it. And then it gets done. So alchemizing a lot of that energy. So let's see what's going on in the first half of our um, Let's just see how far it's like for the staff at the bottom. Let's start the part. Okay. Someone's getting married. Someone preparing to get married, building new, very relational energy, which makes sense with the Libra energy. Ooh. Which are okay, let's go set the kid up in a different area. All right, so yes, as I was saying, that. This first half is strongly focused on relationships. So the first two cards that we have coming out here is Dr. Buzzard and Cordy. And these are the two, um, these are both relationship energies. Cordy is the lover's card and Dr. Buzzard is the justice card. Okay, so I'm seeing, Seeing, you know, preparation for weddings, preparation for uh, perhaps like signing of contracts, moving, getting prepared to move, even um, there may be, there could be some separation, uh, but there may also come literally some literal going to court, excuse me, in reference to business practices. Um, this can even be, so this is Libra and Gemini energy. All right, so there may be some communication. Maybe people are wanting to partner with you, okay? Um, it's a lot of movement energy here. What else is happening? All right, and it's like a, a detaching from an old situation, right? That may not have been necessarily, uh, that gave you the room to be free, right? So it's like a walking away from something so that you can, so something new can be walked into, something of more stability can be walked into, right? Because the next card that we have coming out out of there is six of nine. So it's a lot of air energy with this. So Scorpio season may still feel very Libra, you know, very, um, Scorpio energy is normally very uh, slow, very methodical, very um, hard to grasp or hard to move. But at the beginning of Scorpio season, things will still be flowing in the wind, right? As it does with that Libra energy still. Because right, there is a, a shift in, in the mind, the way in which the mind operates, even there's a lot of mental energy here, a lot of mental energy here, even in the, the dice that we roll, because Mercury is a uh, Mercury, Virgo is ruled by Mercury, okay, and the third house is ruled by Mercury as well, of Gemini, right? So there may be a lot of things coming up in regards to friendships, community efforts, right? Working in groups and organizations that we're part of. We may be receiving some money from these groups and organizations. Maybe there is some group or organization or um, collective of something that is uh, providing some aspect of stability. Uh, there could be Again, some money it is that we have been, right, because the four of coins is coming out here. Um, so we may be, be in the space of saving money to move forward because of the place that we're moving forward into, right? This can also uh, be you figuring out, strategizing new ways in order to... Um, It's like a connecting with oneself in reference to treasure. It's interesting because these these energies don't necessarily mesh together. 
the air energy, yes, but the floor earth is um in as far as dignity goes, it's an enemy to all of this air energy, right? But since it is of a minor arcana and the only one, it, and it's a four, it's crazy, and it's a four of coins, right? So this is what I'm seeing is there's a balance coming forward in reference to uh, like some healing taking place, some old emotional aspect of things. Um, all right, something that's going to allow some stability to manifest. All right, and it's like these changes that's taking place may not necessarily be something it is that is wanting to be had or it's like you're almost just not sure about it about what's taking place but at the same time it feels right it feels like that's what's supposed to be done even um so that the healing can take place this is a very strong healing energy very protected vibes a very powerful first half of of, of, of autumn of fall okay there is a lot of power here a lot of trumping out of things that do not necessarily um work anymore whatever it is that was working it no longer is okay it's like it's time to relinquish that which has been burdening us in a way of um our happiness our fulfillment right and it's been a very mental thing right a working of the mind a, a getting clear right a lot of clarity coming forth and seeing what it is it's right it's like we have a lot of thoughts all the time and those thoughts are not necessarily true so it's like you what thoughts are you believing what thoughts are really real what is it that what knowing what knowledge it is that you're coming into that is turning into wisdom right because sometimes not all knowing that you gain becomes wisdom sometimes it's not necessarily for you it's just an understanding you have now right under your belt it's like okay i know this Right, but I'm also getting um, that with, wherever hmm. what I'm seeing here, just looking at these cards, is that. Um, that there is something that is is separating. Now, this may not necessarily be you and someone else, but this can be like an idea and a way of doing things. It's what I'm getting more than anything. The way that you've been going about doing things is different. So it's bringing in the resources. The, it's bringing in the, the material aspect of it. So whether that is money, whether that is like the, the contracts, right? Um, that, that's the people, okay? The the connections, maybe this is a very family thing taking place. I'm also getting that there is a lot of connection with family at this time, right? A lot of perhaps reuniting, um, going back to where you came from, going back to where you started from so that you can recognize where it is that you're going kind of vibes, you know, and really implementing what it is that you've learned along the way right, to help you continue to move forward down the path, down the road of all of the things, you know, so with that, um, there is a lot of legal energy here, so what I do want to say is make sure when it comes to business, make sure you have all your paperwork in alignment, make sure uh, maybe you need to connect with a lawyer, Right. Maybe you need to make sure that all the contracts it is that you're needing, even insurance, that may be something that's being that's needed at this time um, to to receive. Also, somebody, if you are in a space of about to purchase a house, like and you're building this from the ground up, um, you need to meet with the people in person. 
Okay, you need to go where they are. You need to see what it is that they've already done so that you can make sure that you are receiving the quality it is that you want out of what it is that you're building. Okay, because you are going to have everything it is that you need in order to make this happen in the way that you want, in the beauty that you want. Okay, and because you're going from like this cloudy, not really being able to see things to like the cloud, the skies are clear, right? It's blue, it's beautiful for real, you know, and, and really being able um, to connect with your higher self, right? To the higher expression of being, the transition is taking place. Okay, so at the bottom we had the um, five of, basket so there's definitely something old that has had a stuff when it comes to and it could have been a relationship thing but you know it could have just been a subconscious thing a soul level type of energy a lot of soul retrieval coming back to wholeness here a lot of union with the self taking place here it's a lot of focus on us which is um, or I should say on you, the viewer, uh, that is supporting you in the connections and the collaborations. And this is also a lot about recognizing what relationships do you have in your life right now that aren't necessarily in alignment on the path it is that you're going. It's really important that, uh, that you have around you who you need to have around you when it comes to what it is that you're doing that's taking place at this time because anything else can lead to a distraction. I'm also hearing that somebody's about to get hired for something that they're good at. And this may be like an unexpected thing. That's interesting. Okay, so... We actually got this card in the weekly. Um, so the first half of fall, we have the strong card, Mermaid. And she is about attraction. So this is bringing forth what it is that we desire. All right, the world of water is an ocean that suffers no stagnation. Okay, so things are going, things are flowing, right, rapidly. It is um, very it's a fertile time right and this is coming through by way of the shift in the mindset right the shift in the way of communication of relationships of connection okay and this is what's allowing us to and carrying us forward is going to put us on the right step put us in the place in reference to our legacy right to long-term goals whatever you want to call it like i know some people got to feel however they feel about the word legacy um but long-term things right that's the focus at this time and in moving forward toward that so uh the strong call mermaid is a musical water spirit she predicts romance for you be aware and ready to receive communication from someone who will complete your world news regarding a project will be the most sweet song bringing your heart's desire and placing you into harmony with all others your actions will create a response like an echo among new individuals who approach you quite unexpectedly or spontaneously. The mystery of the river is the art of hunting. Search for the real potential of your bounty future and find a new life direction. It may involve travel to water or overseas and breaking away from the old for something new and fresh full of promise. So definitely some trips being taken, even if it's just like on the other side of town kind of thing. Um, maybe you literally do have to cross over water to get to from one place to another uh, where it is that you live. I live in Houston. That's definitely a thing. Okay. We definitely have to cross near, especially if you're going like south. So, um, and if you are going... If you, okay, wow, okay, so if you, this may have to do with like fame, reputation, recognition, right, and people seeing you, as she said, you know, and this bringing in a lot of, um, it's like old cycles are ending, so some, so 
a, a new can start, right? And bringing a lot of beauty, bringing a lot of like effervescent energy as well, okay? Bringing a lot of peace and stability, a lot of love and unconditional uh, connections and relationships it is that you were needing at this time to be able to help support you in moving forward. So let's see. What else do we have here for the first half of our things are manifesting for sure? How it's manifesting is up to us personally, you know, like what have we been doing? What have we been investing for real? Fairies, what messages do you have for this first half of honor for the collective? Okay, so, so there's a lot of water, another mermaid in the fairy day. Okay, so water element. Okay, so there may be a lot of cleansing, a lot of healing. There is some growth taking place as well. Okay, and this, what I'm getting is that this water is nourishing, right? Because in these cards, there was no water that came out here. Okay, um, but that brings that balance that's needed with this earth energy that's here, All right? Because air and earth together, earth, wind is just going to blow earth away, right? <laughs> it's not going to, it's going to dry it out and it's going to blow it away. But this water is here nourishing us and reminding us to be and go in the flow, it says water is the elixir of life on earth. It is also a symbol for the astral fluid or universal energy for, that permeates all things. Water deserves our respect and gratitude since without it, there is no life. Honor and understand what it is that you as a human being can do to protect its purity and to not waste, be wasteful of it. Water element is associated often with the divine feminine. With the divine feminine. It is about love, fertility, emotion, and is also associated with the subconscious mind. Water has no fixed state. It is in a constant state of flux. If, if this card has appeared to you today, work on consciously appreciating water and what it does for you. Consider carefully all the ways you use water. How much do you use? Okay. One second. Okay, so the water element, she <laughs> speaks about going with the flow of things, right? Um, recognizing and honoring the element of water and seeing where it is that uh, you haven't been respecting that within yourself, within your own personal life. You know, so going with the flow of the changes, right? Clearing your consciousness, clear, clearing your conscious, I should say, right? Um going forward with things in a clear and a uh, pure way that um, you know allows you to be free of any entanglements that are not going to serve you in moving forward in where it is that you're going you know things are changing things are definitely changing make sure, make sure that you're drinking a lot of water at this time right that you are watering your plants, okay, uh, that you are watering your, your mind, that you are uh, taking baths, okay, taking um, relaxing showers, whatever it is that you need to do, maybe you need to get into some water even, okay, so let's see what else is going on, let's see what else is being experienced, what other messages do you have for the viewers for the first half of fall? What else do you have here? Okay. Again. So we have this card came out yesterday as well. So this these energies are very predominant within this Libra season, within this first uh half of of fall, you know. Some things, again, some things are ending there. Some things that we are wanting to go forward with, maybe hmm, this could even speak about um, 
like these new things that are coming in, they may not necessarily be as long lasting as we intend them to be, right? What it is that we are wanting to uh, manifest from them may not come necessarily in the ways in which we believe they should, right? Not that they won't happen at all, but it may come in a way that we believe they should. There may be a lot of things happening that we believe they should happen in a different way. And with that comes with a need to change one's mind, going with the flow of what it is, the changes that have to take place, for things to go how it is that they have to go. Okay, yeah, because we have the new moon at the bottom. It says a new start is coming. Okay, so let's see. What else is here? Some of us may be also starting some a new start, some new projects as well, because um, when it comes to uh, electional, okay, so that's the difference. This card speaks about horary astrology, and in that, when the question is being casted during this time, and if it's happening um, during a void, of course, moon, then what you're asking about, what you're trying to gain insight about, nothing will come up. It is, or maybe your mind needs to change about it. But if we use this in the form of electional astrology, this is a really great um, energy because this is the beginning and precedent of something building, right? As putting something out at an opportune time to make something happen, to make something long lasting happen, okay? What else is here? Yeah, that's the level up. This is Queen Ya Asantiwa. Okay, and she is in the symbol of Queens. All right, and let's see what she talks about. So she says, raise your standards. A leap forward for one is a leap forward for the tribe. Your choices can raise the frequency of your commitment your community and the planet time to level up this is your season for a quantum leap you have prepared for this life does not have to be linear and neither does growth a quantum leap feels drastic and huge but the secret is that quantum leaps happen little by little so what inspired action helps you level up connecting to spirit with rituals movement meditation and visualization is a great start it says divine timing is on my side, right? So all of these things are happening in alignment. The truth is coming out. The truth is being revealed even through like, okay. So it's like what you thought something was, right? You may have been putting um, maybe not the best mindset into what it is that you have into the growth it is that you have been preparing for your life, that you've been taking part in and taking place in. And the truth of that is about to be revealed through this new start that's taking place here in this summer. This season, the beginning of this season. What's the personal power? I am happy. So lots of joy, lots of happiness. Her hair kind of looks like mine. That's cute. Um, you know, really free, really... Um, vibrant very flowy right <laughs> my hair ain't doing nothing okay but like if the wind comes flying through my hair it's gonna be all over the place okay so very free flowing a lot of movement a lot of um, you know joy vibrancy exuberance even from following our heart knowing that what what is within is going to bring us the success it is that we are needing so we so care that we are needing at this time you know connect and this is all that air energy this relationship energy like venus venus is here twice like we have um mercury here and then this four of coins which is uh is capricorn energy mars and capricorn so um Mars and Capricorn is the warlord to me, like the warlord who wins all the wars, who has the best strategy, who has the best team. Okay, so you're building that with whoever it is that you're connecting with. Okay, and it is bringing forth that success it is that you want. 
Um, maybe y'all meeting over coffee. Okay, maybe you just having some coffee by yourself. I don't know. All right, either way, it's going to be very good. So let's see what's going on in the second half of the bottom. Second half of the bottom for for the collective here. Things may be moving fairly quickly. Second half of the bottom of the collective here. What else do we have in the middle? That's very interesting. Okay, so the first card that we have coming out here is the Six of Coins. So this is a you know, luck being on our side, people, us working together with others, a give and take kind of effort taking place here. And in this, it, it's supporting us in ending something, putting a complete in a complete stop to something. Granted, this is also giving me, with all the cards that came out, it's almost as if that there's some betrayal taking place here. Um, in reference to someone that you were have been working with or choosing to work with. Um, granted, what I'm also getting is that there is someone who it is that you're working with who is helping you uh, come up out of old things, right? Old mindsets, old anything that blocks you, anything mm -hmm. that's stopping you, anything that has you in this space of seeing things in a negative light before they even before you even go forward right so it's like okay i'm gonna do this kind of thing and then you're you're like oh wait this might happen this might happen it's like you're signing yourself out before things even take place but you're at the final push and you need to know that you're protected you're protected by your own means but your ancestors are here protecting you oh. spirit your spirit guides are here protecting you every you got everything here uh supporting you in, in keeping you at bay from anything and anyone who may come through in some type of deceitful type of manner. Okay, so we have here the five of sticks and the five of sticks speaks about having strength through your individual efforts. Okay, because maybe the group thing didn't work out how you expected it to Okay, so there may be a lot of interruption come this second half of fall, you know, um, and it may be coming up the room. Uh, I'm getting, it's going to, a lot of discernment is going to be required in the second half of fall because the first two cards that we have coming out here is, um, the Six of Coins and the Ten of Knives, okay? Now, with this, that can be speaking about working with someone who's helping you move through things that have been a very big block for you, things that have been um, stifling you, but this stuff is coming to an end, like an abrupt end, possibly, um, right? And this is going to bring great change, and it's going to be necessary for you to uh, know that you're protected, know that you're safe, know that uh, coming up out of this internal conflict it is that you've been holding in and when it comes to the moves that you're making to uh, the, the path it is, the road that you've been taking, you know, because these things are going to move fairly quickly, but you're also going to need patience for things to work out in the way in which it is that they're working now. Uh, you're going to have to have a sense of trust, a sense of faith, like your belief is going to have to be, you know, like you're going to have to do whatever work it is that's necessary. And this is not necessarily 
me saying like, oh, you got to heal or anything like that, but more so moving on a path of what is healthy for you, right? And doing what is needed for you, right? You're still needing to really connect with that water in the second half of fall, you know, and really um, utilizing that energy of flow, not trying to control so many things, a lot of controlling energy here. There may be something coming up where you find that people are trying to control what it is that you're doing, how you're going about this. It is a lot of energy here um, in the second half of like working with people and them backstabbing you. You know, it's like these bonds that you built, the structure you may or may not have. Maybe you took a gamble with something. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily pan out in the way in which you intended for it to make do, All right? So this is, again, needing to be discerning, discerning, but at the same time, what I'm getting is, you know, you you got this, this ending happening for you that's about to bring you to somewhere really big, okay? And it's going to create a lot of competition. But the competition that's here is a healthy type of competition. Like it's, it can be fun if you so choose, right? If you don't see it as a need for, um, for things to be, uh, in some type of, in some type of way, some type of uh, need to get back kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm personally, um, where I'm at in my life, it's just like, I don't, I'm not into the competition things, like, we all doing our own thing, and even if we're doing the same things, we're doing it differently, that don't mean we competing, granted, from a business perspective, uh, that if you look into, or if you ever taken any type of business course, um, it speaks about competition, right? The person down the street is your competition of how many clients you're going to get, who comes to you, right? Who is offering this? But it's not even, mm, that's the thing. It's not even about that. Like people need different things and everybody not going to resonate with you the same way they resonate with another person. That doesn't make you better than them or them um, less than you or vice versa because everybody Everybody needs something different. And in that, everybody can offer something different, right? Because this is a lot about, this is like a lot of community work here, okay? So it's like that which you are is kind of like you need to be minding your own business, for real. Really connecting with people that you can trust that uh, ability to be discerning. Discerning is going to be heavily needed in the second half of August. Autumn, excuse me. What else is here? Because this is Scorpio and Sagittarius season, right? So there may be people that you don't necessarily see or know of who um, are in competition with you. And um, our people be petty. They don't know how to deal with their pettiness. Don't know how to see themselves, right? But this comes to that whole mental state. Like this is a lot of suffering energy here. But at the same time, I see this, and it's like the suffering is leaving. Okay, so it's kind of like be careful who you're listening to. Be careful who you're talking to. Don't let people put their spells in your mind, in your ear of how they think that things should go right um trying to force your hand in any kind of way right or at any type of rate but nevertheless the mermaid card we have here is the rosica and she speaks about your ideal and your ideal and belief weighted weight created in the distance call it and it will come she speaks about having fun having a good time and at the bottom is the inference card so what i'm getting here is um that there is a lot of it is is something like this may be that time where something big is coming you know this may be those that tower 
energy moment that comes that shows up and um burns everything down so that fruitfulness can grow okay so the Russell Cost says adaptability is your key to success. A powerful wave of bright circumstance is predicted for you by the Russell Cost, who emerge on land into in the summertime in a light robe of mist. Your charm will certainly be with a special someone or create a happening that appears to be blessed. Because the Russell Cost spellbind spellbind passers by with their sweet singing and beauty. A call you receive from a like-minded person bodes well and leads to fertility because where the Rusica dance, the grass and the crops thrive. You will also go to a party event or reunion indicated by the Rusica calling out to each other while swinging on the trees and singing songs to the rivers and lakes. Again, being discerning, have a good time, but be discerning, right? Because know that is your energy that's attracting all of this, right? People um, in the second half, people are wanting to be near you. They're wanting to be around you. They're wanting to see, like, how you, how you, how, how, like, where, when, what did you do kind of thing, you know? Um, but a lot of freedom is coming forward and you're receiving what it is that you are wanting in this. Take care of your health as well. Exercise, get fluid, get, get some movement going. Yoga, all right? Walking, maybe running. Maybe you need some vigorous exercise from this time even. And at the beginning, this first half of all, Maybe you need to uh, focus more on the flexibility of your body, right? Which is really what you want to build first before strengthening it. It's the balancing act, right? So this literally speaks about balance, um, making sure that everything is in balance. Making sure that you're taking steps of balance. Okay. It says if you drew this card, it may be time to sit back and review just what you have have put on your plate. Are you overworking or underworking? Strive for balance between work and play and honor your mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual needs. Weed out whatever no longer serves your highest good. Enjoy your life and live it now. Strive for balance in all that you do. Just take deep breaths, release it in and since the calm unfolding, this is peace of balance. The scales are always tipping one way or the other. The trick is to not let the scales tip too far in any direction. Without the constant shifting of perspective, life will be stagnant and offer no growth or lesson. If things feel very out of balance in your life, consider your thought patterns. You know, where do you where do they lead you? Replace any thoughts that are not for your highest good with thoughts that are positive and productive. Remember to focus on the things that you want in your life, not your perceived troubles. Act as if your good has already manifested. It has manifested on a higher plane and is now working its way to you in your material world. Remember that balance is constantly in a state of pursuit. It must remain in the state of movement. If the movement stops, then it no longer is the balancing act, but a state of suspension and lack of action. Learn to juggle. Yeah. Okay, so... What I'm also getting is like a, a being careful of, um, so, you know, sometimes betrayal and backstabbing can come from people trying to like take your energy, like distractions, right? Being discerning of where, so a work-life balance is needing to be had at this time, right? Being careful of the overindulgence because you're coming to this space of, it seems like anything being possible, right? Bringing in what it is that you have always desired. I mean, you're really going to have to take the time to um, recognize what is what, where do you, you know, don't overwork yourself, don't underwork, don't over, um, over party or whatever, over escape. All right, making sure there's a balance. Don't overeat. Don't eat too much of this or too much of that kind of thing. That's what's this. Yeah, so we have a full moon. 
surrender to the divine. So at during this time, we have a, a full moon eclipse in Taurus. And so that might be a prominent energy in the full moon in Gemini as well. Things are maybe really coming to fruition during these times. Um, so it's important that we we connect with that oneness of God, that union with God within ourselves, that that um, connection to our higher self, to lead us true, to lead us in the right direction. Um, it's also important to know that you are good enough, right, for all that is coming your way. You deserve it, right? Even if it's not here, you have to believe that you deserve it today. What other messages do we have for the second half of the poem? Grounding, yeah. So it's going to be really important to stay grounded because everything is going to be moving very quickly. Um, I don't mean like it's like this this help comes in, even at the bottom, you got betrayal. So you really need to uh, stay, don't betray yourself. That's what I'm hearing. Do not betray yourself. Don't uh, allow all this abundance that's coming in to distract you from what it is. Don't don't make it like make. Don't let it make you lazy. Don't make it. Don't let it make you um, lack on your responsibilities because you made it somewhere. Like you gotta keep doing the same things to keep it. Okay. I am passionate, okay? So Scorpio season is definitely <clears throat> going to be very prominent during the second half. So what would that be? Like, so maybe November, starting November 8th up until the end of Scorpio season, things may really be transforming and taking off in a way that you are needing to I have a higher purpose. Okay, so this has a lot to do with life, with work, clearing old debts. May be easier to uh, attain lending, but it's important to recognize who you're lending, who you're gaining, uh, receiving this lending from. To sign again. <laughs> Like, see the fine details. The details are important at this time. Pay attention. Pay attention. Again, water. That's the only water card that came out. Oh, well, Scorpio energy. So, yes. With this, um, make sure you're drinking enough water. All right. You want to drink. If you drink bottled water, you treat. So, enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself. Was that Michael Jackson or Jackson 5 or something? Um, because it's gonna go really good. Just this betrayal energy is very strong. So it's like, this is also like very self-sabotaging energy if this doesn't have anything to do with anybody outside of you. Okay, so yeah, y'all, that is the collective energy for um autumn season so we're gonna get into the elements in the first one 